coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. The new Hoyts have arrived. Carbon defiant. This is a lifestyle. This isn't something that you live just come October 1st or September or whatever. This is 24-7 all year long. Okay, uh, hold it in the middle. Uh, the left, your other left. To the right, uh, just put it in the center. Uh, there. Uh, Welcome to the Archer's Choice. Folks, we want to thank you for, this is our 16th season. It's been a oh long run at it, goodness. and we've been blessed to travel everywhere and just and share everything with everyone. It's been awesome. You know, we've always said it's a lifestyle, and there's no better way to kick off the season with our true lifestyle, and that's white-tailed deer season. At home, Illinois, and this is where we're just going to get going rolling into it. Hanging with the Sea Anzarulo, yeah. seeing what we do, as we always call it, it's the choice lifestyle. You choose it, because you'll love it. After a busy summer of office work, trade shows, food plot maintenance, and setting stands, the new Hoyt bows had finally arrived. And Ralph and Vicki are excited to set them up and start shooting because deer season is right around the corner. I've got a new Vixen bow here. Oh the new Hoyts have arrived. It's a new Hoyt Defiant, Carbon Defiant, Carbon Defiant. And check oh, this out man. this year. We have a new Vixen color. You can still do the pink, which is what I've always had. But now it has purple, too. Look is at purple that. purple like the new color? I don't know. I'm kind of excited about it, though, because I can take my new arrows, my new Beeman's, and look at look how cool that would look. Huh? Oh, color coordination. Yeah. It's kind of a cool setup, so set it up. Warning, to avoid personal injury to yourself, bystanders, or potential bow damage, this bow must not be pressed in most standard bow presses due to the Beyond Parallel design of the Ultraflex Lint for a list of Hoyt approved bow presses referred to page 10 of the bow's owner's manual. Thankfully, Ralph is reading the warning label because honestly, he is probably the most accident prone person I have ever met. I'm not kidding. I mean, he has a busted ankle by a car rolling over it. Don't ask, long story. I don't know where she's coming from because I am not accident prone. I'm always paying attention to what I'm doing. It's the other people around me that aren't paying attention, and they're the ones that hurt me. He broke a rib pushing a boat. That didn't happen. Seriously, how about blood poisoning almost all the way up to his armpit? It's not what you think. I mean, there's so many things I could go into, but you, there's just not enough time in the show. I guess I'll have to go blue. Do you want blue or black? I am gonna go, I think I need to go black, because that blue just is gonna clash horribly. Oh, it's gonna clash. It is. Oh, Think yeah. about no. it. Look at you. Put that blue thing in there. You put that blue thing uh. in there. It would be like. Yeah. Now that Ralph and Vicky have their bow sighted in, they can focus their time on scouting for that perfect spot to intercept a big buck. Yeah, that's right. It's the season. Whitetail deer season here in Illinois, and guess what? It's my first night out, and we've been so busy. Vicky's at her mom's right now, and she told me to go pick up RJ. And I sort of finagled. I got her picking up RJ. She's gonna come home early from her mom's to pick up, because I said, well, honey, it's a great day. It's, it's just perfect to go out deer hunting. Is it all right if I go deer hunting? She goes, well, yeah, she'll, she'll pick up RJ then later. I'm getting out. Well, then this wind picked up, wouldn't you know it? But it, it ain't deterring us. We're heading out still. We almost called it quits and we said, you know what? We're out here, we might as well. We just traveled another mile and a half. We got up in here. These are our big towel blinds that we made, custom made ourselves. We mounted them on, on the rear step quad pods. We're about six, seven foot up in the air, overlooking our HS food plots. And I'm telling you what, it's windy, but we're out. I like getting in the stand, you know, especially the first time, you know, of the season, and just you sit back and you just, I mean, the smells, you hear the birds, you hear all this going on, and 
This brings us back to reality and brings us back to why we do what we do. There's always another day. And we're home, we're with family and friends, the office is rocking, and maybe tomorrow or the next day, but I ain't worried. I'm home. I'm deer hunting. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our vantage point and I'm gonna turn around and face it with the wind to or the with the sun to our back. You know, we're not trying to be any experts because we're not. But the thing is, is when the wind isn't right, the best thing to do is not get in your area. Don't booger it up. Just do do what we're doing. We're still hunting. Actually we are. I mean we're turning around and we're just getting on a high vantage point glass and seeing the movement, making sure, reiterating, making sure we understand and we know the movement patterns. When the wind ain't right, get out. Real simple. Don't educate the animals, and I don't care what animal it is. They live by their nose, and, and well, it just, it ain't right. Most of our stands are set up, if it's not on a food source, they're set up on, on alleyways, you know, funnels, on um, pinch points where the bucks are gonna come through when the big boys are on their feet. It's frustrating, I ain't gonna lie to you, because you wanna be out hunting, but it's way better not to educate them. So come deer season, you know, we, we, we figure out, we've gotta figure out a lot of things. For many, just like you, this is a lifestyle. This isn't something that you live just come October 1st or September or whatever. This is 24 seven, all year long. We got out early this afternoon. It's been foggy all morning. The winds are fairly calm, but coming out of the south, which is gonna blow us straight up this hedgerow. Most of our deer activity should be coming from the south, so we should be in a good spot this evening. We usually see some does when we're sitting at a spot, but being as it's the end of October, we're hoping that maybe there's a buck or two following these does. We'll keep our fingers crossed. It's a beautiful afternoon compared to the last couple days, so hopefully they'll be moving. First night in the stand, I am pumped. I'm sitting there waiting for stuff to move, waiting for the things. It's getting to prime time, and I see movement. It's not a deer. It's a guy walking, spotting and stalking through the timber next door. And um, there's not a darn thing I can do about it. I'm not happy, and that's about all I have to say. First night in the stand. There are squirrels everywhere. I've counted at least six. I think there were six squirrels. Maybe I saw the same squirrel six times. No, at one point in time, I seriously counted, I think, six squirrels all at the same time. And I'm thinking, squirrel season, I better wait for the deer. It's uh, time to pack everything up. I'm gonna text RJ and have him come pick us up in the bad boy buggy, but it'll be dark by the time he gets here. It was kind of an interesting afternoon. We did see that old six points, so that was pretty cool. And uh, we saw some does, but nothing came close enough, but that's okay, you know what? Tomorrow's Halloween, so who knows what that brings for us. All in all, it was a great first sit, you know? You get to see different things you never expect to see, and we saw that old buck walking around too, so it was a pretty cool night. Now, tomorrow morning, Ross gonna head out to the stand and we'll see if it's trick or treat. When it's foggy, I think it's it gives you this sense of eerie feeling. You know, you're getting in, and I'm gonna tell you, there's times that the fog can help you and there's times the fog can hurt you. 
For example, if it's real foggy, yet the wind is still just misting and it's blowing in your face, and you got movement, there's a lot of times that all of a sudden it's right there right now. And that's when, oh my gosh, you know, it just happens so fast. Or the other way is that fog is just sitting and it's just holding that scent down. That moisture in the air sometimes can disperse it even further. So that circle, that perimeter of your scent could be reaching out a little bit further. But there's still something about hunting in the fog. It's cool. You never know, like, if the swamp thing is going to come get you. Although Ralph hasn't seen anything this morning, conditions are perfect for an evening sit. Ralph has a few chores to do, namely raking and burning leaves. Everyone knows fire and Ralph don't mix. You know, Vicki and everybody gets pretty nervous that I'm here with a rake and burning, and she's not home, so it's probably not a good thing, but it's that time of year. I gotta burn stuff. The world can rest at ease now that Ralph was able to finish his leap incineration without a stage four county emergency. With the yard work complete, Ralph is ready to hit the woods and settle into his stand for the evening. Well, we're really pushing the wind down. Telling you this evening just feels it. It just felt it. And you know, I mean, you're gonna play with the wind a little bit. You're gonna really ride it to a tight parameter where, where you know you know it could help you, it could hurt you. You know you gotta get in the stand, you gotta get going and caught movement on the left peripheral, and here comes this buck, and this is one of the bucks we've seen. He's really wide, he's beautiful, and I'm getting ready to let that Hoyt do its business, and, and there's brush, and then he just stepped back just a hair. Beeman went right through him, he spun around, you could see him running in the field, cut back in the timber, and then you saw that tail flick. I love it when a plan comes together. I'm pumped, I'm sitting in a stand and everything's going. I got a great buck, everything's good. We're still seeing deer. And all of a sudden, I'm looking, and here's a coyote. So I'm starting, I can't get no moisture. I, you know, my adrenaline was already spent out. I squeal him in, he comes in, he stops at 30 yards. I'm already at full draw. Wow, baby, put him down, and I just saved a bunch of deer. That's one coyote that's not gonna chase anymore. Something. This is the new Beeman Whiteout. That's 
why we designed it. Look at that arrow. There's no denying. Oh, used to be white. But you tip a beaming new white out with a Spitfire baby. That's all she wrote. Here, let's go to the coyote. What do you think, bud? I know you love predators. Look at that. <laughs> Look at what a Spitfire did to him. Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, we gotta get back on blood now. I know he went in down there, so. Here's blood. Yep. Hey, RJ. Here's blood. That way to here. Hmm? There he is. <laughs> you spotted him before I did. <laughs> Oh, look at that, honey. Oh my gosh. What? Look at that book. Hey. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hmm. It's good. It's beautiful. Yeah, you didn't go far at all. No, beautiful deer. Look at that buck, guys. Wow. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, honey. Oh, he's pretty. Nice. Let's smell him. Mm, great. Rotten. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Told you it was wide, guys. Huh? He's beautiful, honey. What a beautiful deer. Congratulations. Thank you. That's Thanks, awesome. guys. I'm glad you're all here. <laughs> it's been a crazy year. It's been a crazy everything. And you know what? This is just. You know, I told Kenneth when you sent me a text message that you shot a buck. I said to Kenneth, I said, you know, I said there's truly a reason and a purpose for everything because I wasn't supposed to be in the tree this afternoon, but Nani got a reprieve on her chemo for three yeah. weeks, so I hurried back in the tree stand, and I took the stand that you probably would have been in. Yep, I would have went there. Then you would have seen a badger and a coyote play. That would have been cool. But instead, you took the new stand, and look what you did tonight, and, and saw, a coyote. Saw nine bucks, nine different That's bucks. crazy. Saw a big, big mature eight. He's, I mean, he's way thicker. Uh, That's awesome. And I mean, just beautiful but you know what we were also very short on freezer meat yeah so i really appreciate it because i was going to shoot anything that walked by me and uh, i'm telling you you could ask josh another buck ran a doe really and i knocked another beam and then i was going to take the doe you, you know what <laughs> i mean like let's fill up we our need freezer because we need to and we got people wanting some meat so we need to get busy on it but that's a beautiful deer honey oh, congratulations yeah. again. i'll tell you when a plant comes together it sure makes you feel good and, and it did to get a buck to get a coyote in the same sit? Yeah. Yeah, I, At was, home. I was pretty jacked up. I mean, it was really cool. At home yep. in Illinois. Yeah. I mean, you know, all of us are there. RJ and I, we, you called us up and said, hey. So we came out there and helped you recover that bucket. It was, it was a beautiful deer. Well, to have it with you guys there, is, that's what it's about. It is. You know, Love it. it. It's been, you know, 16 years long of this. Yeah. Again, it's it's a lifestyle, and we made the choice. We made the choice yeah. to do this lifestyle? Yes. We want to thank you guys, and we want to hope that you come back next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.